this week on Horror Movie Night, we're driving through the deep, dark woods to the deep, dark house with a lot of deep, dark secrets because we watched 1986's Spookies. This whole movie is a secret that we haven't unlocked yet. Adam's wearing shirts with his own face on them. Scott's got one night to live, so he's passing out drunk. And Matt's hiding in a wine cellar waiting to fart on some unsuspecting victims. <laughs> Strap on your thinking caps and crack open your skulls as we dissect just what the fuck the three of us just watched this week. Uh, Adam, this one was your choice based on a trailer that you saw and nothing else. Based uh, entirely on the trailer, and that trailer still is amazing. Now Actually, is the movie Spookies. Um, <laughs> the, tra- the trailer is brought down now that I know what is happening in a lot of movies. <laughs> This is the most confused I've ever been watching anything for this. Like, I have – you're going to hear when I start doing the plot description that you'll see, like, about the 30-minute mark. I'm like, I don't even have things to say. Like, there's so little plot to what's happening in this movie that I just gave up. I gave up on trying to control – what was happening into some type of storyline because the writer gave up on trying to keep what was going on into some type of storyline. Do we want to get into that now or do we want to wait until after your half-assed description? Yeah, let's get through this half-assed description. So I started off, the first thing I wrote was, I have no clue what the fuck is going on. (laughs) There's a group of people, and I don't get what their relationships are, but they're driving to some house in the woods, and there's a kid in a graveyard and some type of weird werewolf creature, and I'm only five minutes into this movie, but like there's a surprise party for Billy or something. I don't know. This is basically (laughs) just Night of the Demons, but with a weird group of people partying in the house in the middle of a graveyard, and then they're attacked by various There wasn't even that much partying going on. Like A couple of the already drunk dudes were like, Let's drink this random sketchy alcohol we found. And I said, they're not really partying though. And then the last thing they're just listening says, to like elevator music too, like the least so enjoyable, like just very bland, annoying classical music. Well, then the only other thing I have here is I say, and then they were attacked by various creatures, including some weird farting poop monsters. And I have no <laughs> clue what the point of this movie is. Really, the only way to do this is to go through and go like. Um, okay, this special effect piece, this special <laughs> effect piece, this special... Because, yes. like, as, as far as I know, that's what the whole point of this movie was, was to just line up a lot of special effect piece, like set pieces and knock them all down, right? Which they kind of accomplished. Some parts way better than others. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's such a weird movie. I, I give it credit because it's an 80s film that I, I'm pretty sure Billy's dead, right? There was no point where Billy didn't survive or where Billy survived being buried alive. So, so like they kill a child. That's the you know that always wins points. That for me. makes Adam win. <laughs> yeah, I was happy Adam. about Billy Jack. <laughs> although, although Billy was probably the most competent actor in the movie. <laughs> Here, here's a question. Um, you know the British couple, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, or or at least the couple that the the girl is British. Um, her boyfriend or whatever gets plastered, hammered, passed out, drunk. Whatever happened to him? He got his face eaten by one of those oh, one of those gremlin the, type the, characters. The gremlin ripoffs ate him. Okay, I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. must have looked away for a second. That, yeah, that scene was hilarious. If you if you miss that like two second reveal, you're you're you would be confused. Yeah, that scene was hilarious because you could tell that they only had one of those puppets, but they wanted to make it seem like there were multiples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they just never never was there more than one in one shot because they but only she, had the she one. She did puppet. kill two or three of them, right? Yeah, yeah. I like, mean, like, she, technically it's the same one multiple times, but, I mean, I'm pretty sure that she kills a couple of them. Yeah, jump into, like, the actual what's going on here. Because I remember that guy posted it in horror in the Horror Movie Night uh, Facebook page. Did you guys read it then? I did read through some of it. I read the whole thing twice because it was a really good read. This is not my first time watching Spookies, but this is the best time watching Spookies because now it makes sense. And so, whereas the first time I watched Spookies, I was in Matt's boat where I just watched it with... My forehead crinkled the whole time, like, really? Why? Another set piece. Okay, why? 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 So the the short answer is that this movie was another movie, but it, it had a different name with the original team that was behind it, and they had this ridiculous British investor who really want. he was just some rich asshole who was like, I think I want to finance a horror movie, and these guys were like, yes, we finally have somebody to finance our horror movie, and... Their original script was like an effect every second or third page. It was a lot of effects. And so they went over budget and and then they and so they asked for more money and then they went over 
their schedule and but everybody that was involved basically all the people that get killed all the monsters and the original directors and cinematographers all basically like put together what should have been a pretty solid 80s b horror flick with just a shitload of monsters and and creature effects because that was what they wanted to do but then the investor got involved and he had these he was like this weird pervy dude who like was just kind of a creep to the ladies and and in women in general he was kind of a misogynist and then but the thing also is okay if you want a the specific answer for why the muck monsters fart a bunch yeah yeah that was added in because investor thought farts were the funniest thing in the world oh well, so, and i agree on this one thing. <laughs> he actually that is his best contribution to the movie <laughs> okay I'm going to disagree, but I'll get to that. So <laughs> so what happened was finally it got to this point where the original d- directorial group were just like, this is shit. We cannot handle your bullshit anymore. We're done. And so they quit. And he's like, well, good, because I was going to fire you anyway because he was a vindictive jerk like that. So um, he gets like this other group of people to rewrite the script. And so they basically took a movie – Took the original movie, and then they added the like the evil magician. I think that they either added in the cat man or they brought him on for more shooting, but I'm pretty sure it's the former. I'm pretty sure the cat man never really like interacted with anybody in the film, the original cast. I can't remember though. But in any case, um, they they did it in such a way that they got some woman who'd never edited a, f- a film before to come in. She did everything the investor wanted because she was an ex-porn star trying to become a legitimate Hollywood name, I guess. I don't know. And Spookies is what you got. He wanted to call it Spooks. And then everybody from America was like, yeah, that's what, that's like a derogatory name for black people. You can't use that. He's like, oh, I don't get it. Just do it anyway. And then I, I don't know. So I guess that they spelled on Spookies because it was less offensive. So this film is awesome when you think about it in that context that like yeah the fact that it survived at all yes <laughs> and, and technically it's on lists of uh lost films because there's so much that was cut they cut like 35 to 45 minutes of this film down to make spookies like the original movie i think it was called dark souls or something not dark souls twisted souls that was the original name of the film the whole idea i think was to do like a haunted house movie where Different parts of the house had different monsters, and they picked off everybody eventually. So I think that that would have made slightly more sense. I'm sure that it still would have been a pretty convoluted movie. But, I mean, it's not like... Let's just put this on a scale of, like, <sighs> Session 9 is a 10, as far as logic goes and twists and turns. Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys is a 1. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think Spookies is that bad in the in the context. You know, it's a it's a solid three. So I thought for a split second, I, I guess I wasn't like totally paying attention to what you said, and I <laughs> and I misheard Puppet Master as Pumpkinhead, and now I really want to see Pumpkinhead versus Demonic Toys. <laughs> Pumpkinhead and demonic toys at the same time on two screens, and then be like, "All oh, this happened at the same time." We're fighting. <laughs> It'll be like our version of listening to Dark Side of the Moon while watching Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you're on here something here, Matt. I think we should always watch two movies that are, we're going to discuss at the exact same time, just to see if they sync up. I think it should just be Pumpkinhead and whatever movie we're supposed to discuss. <laughs> One something is eventually going to stick. <laughs> Yeah, I, I should have done that this week. I should have just watched. I should have had the audio for Slumber Party Massacre and the visual <laughs> for Spookies. <laughs> it would have been great. I think that that might be what I'm doing today after we get done. Like I'm going to find the time to watch Spookies for the first for the third time this year and Slumber Party Massacre for the fourth time this year and, and, and just see what happens because we're going to be discussing Slumber Party Massacre soon. This really does feel like two different movies, right? Like you have the upstairs. It, it yeah, exactly. It's two movies like much to Together. It's the upstairs of the house, which is fine. Like that's a, a somewhat un, like competent. It's okay. There's, like you said, it's like a haunted house. Every room has a new monster in it. Totally cool. I'm okay with that stuff. And then there's some the shit going on in the basement, which is this weird like Sleeping Beauty domination fetish shit, where this guy is just it's just gross. It's super super gross. And and watching watching the trailer. I honestly thought that the Sleeping Beauty chick that was in the basement was going to be the, like, spider snake lady. Uh, yeah. I thought, 
right? Like I thought that's what was going to happen. Like they all, like all their souls get killed, and and then that wakes her up, and she becomes the Spider Snake Lady, and that's like boss fight, right? That's final boss. Here I go. This is right, a Resident Evil movie. Evil movie. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Resident Evil movies. Uh, well, actually, I put them on about the same level. Um, I would rather watch Spookies. Honestly, I would rather watch Spookies. Yeah, I had. I, it was it was fun. I did have fun watching this movie. Like, it was in, an enjoyable movie. The quality of the version that I watched was real shit. Yeah, that um, YouTube video that we were watching it on was not exactly uh, great. No, it's not. 1080p. If we could get like a Blu-ray remastered release of this or something like that, I'd, I'd own it. <laughs> I would buy yeah, a Blu-ray I, of this. Exactly. I want to see like high quality, good, good, you know, audio and visual of of this movie because I think that would make my enjoyment of it a lot better. I could see the effects. I could enjoy it. As it stands right now, everything was dark. Everything was drab. Uh, there was no color scheme to this movie. Really, it was all just. Well, like, let's uh, let's not back. blame YouTube for that, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it was entirely their fault. But I, I could have used the brightness level turned up a little bit on here. But oh uh, yeah. But my my enjoyment of it was tempered a bit by the fact that I was watching it. And I was going like, please, just make any kind of sense at all for me. Like I'm along for the ride. I'm here. <laughs> I get it. I want to see the next special effects piece. But just walk me to it, please. Just walk me to the next one. Don't just, you know, fucking throw it at the wall and hope it sticks. I need something, anything to try and hold on to here. And I like like you said, I my brow was furrowed the whole time. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like it's just <laughs> too much. It's too much. I don't know what I don't know what exactly it needed. I felt like it was beyond fucking ridiculous, but I could have used it to be maybe even just a little more over the top i don't i don't know i don't know what it was not a, i had high hopes for it and i i guess that's my bad i think also we should we should let everybody in on the fact that this is your pick yeah <laughs> you yeah, want to watch did. this yeah for sure for sure i don't even know where i saw it i just like i saw a trailer somebody had posted it no we, we talked didn't we talk about i think it might have come up when we were talking about Gremlins 2, like, six months ago. No. Because this is also one of those movies that's, like, a total ripoff of Gremlins. I know. I'm, I'm happy to have watched it. And it's definitely, like, it's a, it'll be a good conversation piece if I ever have, like, you know, encounter somebody that's into these kind of movies. I'll be like, it's, you know, throw it out there. Have you ever heard of Spookies? And it would be something that would be fun to discuss with somebody. But you watched it three times this year? Fuck that. I'm not, I'm not watching this again for a long fucking time. Unless that Blu-ray <laughs> comes out. Unless that Blu-ray comes in, then I'll watch it again. High quality. You hear us, Scream Factory? Get on that shit. Yeah, I've got very little insight at this point. This is a movie that I get the vibe is only improved upon by the more people that you're watching it with. By yourself, laying in a bed on a really shitty YouTube transfer of an already poorly made movie was like not the ideal circumstances for watching Spookies. Well, I watched it. I watched it with one other person, and we were both kind of like. We weren't making quips because we were both just waiting for it to start making sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's okay, how okay, I what? felt trying to write a plot outline. I even like went on Wikipedia for help, and Wikipedia served nothing to me. So many, like, just so many sharp turns. Away. Like for a second, you'll grasp, like, okay. He's trying to bring this chick back to life with the souls of people. Nope, no, she just wakes up anyways. Okay, all right, uh, they're they're having a party. They're all friends. They're going to go to a house and have a party. Nope, nope, they all hate each other. They want yeah, nothing to do with that. There's, okay. like, no okay, way they... that any of those people have even, like, like, I remember when I first started watching this, I'm like, I have no clue how the people in car A are even remotely friends with the people in car B. Like, they seem to have nothing in common, that there's no reason for them to be together at all. It's like it's like either a car of, like, you know, drunk-up teens who want to go and have a party should be going to this thing, or it's, like, that other car with, like, the older people where it's like, we inherited a house from our uncle, and we're going out there to, like claim it we have to or something like that it was like it's like they took those two tropes from two different movies and we're like well we'll just make them both go everybody will go <laughs> like fuck it we'll just we need to have a lot of bodies because we have a lot of monsters to kill people um so what is your favorite monster from this movie a oh, farting muck monster let's not even uh, i mean i guess that's the pat answer but i actually like the electric tentacle monster 
Electricity Gremlin. Oh, oh, that thing. That yeah. <laughs> it was the Electricity Gremlin. Oh my god! And, and the dude's full was... fucking circle. Oh my god! When they try and get outside, and all those things start coming at them from the swamp, vegetable gremlins. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, though? This is before the new batch, so did Joe Dante steal from this movie? Oh, my God! <laughs> Let's just call it a collaboration. Yeah. I, I'm going to say uh, Spider Lady. Spider Lady all the way. Spider Lady Spider is a pretty cool, pretty cool uh, transformation. Now, here's the thing. Is it just me, or is the guy in the weird plastic tracksuit, like, the biggest misogynist ever? He's like... Talking shit to his poor girlfriend the whole time, like, I want to drink this alcohol. Oh, you're fucking stupid. Like, let's have oh, sex you're talk- here. You're talking Girl, about dude. dude. Hey, fucking shut the fuck up, Veronica. I'm trying to have a fucking party over here. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Let's go. Let's go. the most we- dysfunctional relationship I've ever seen in a horror flick. I mean, in a horror flick that isn't like Serbian film, but... I, <laughs> when they kill the muck monsters and then all that slimy shit was all over the floor, I thought for sure he was going to be like, yeah, let's fucking that slime. Let's fucking do this. <laughs> I thought you'd be like, we wasted all that booze. Get me a straw. Go, we got a whole another cask over here. Fucking get that booze out of there. Also, how bad do you think it smelled after you kill the muck monsters? Because they're made out of muck. Why would the water, why would liquid kill the muck monsters? Wouldn't it have been great if they were like, quick, light a match, and they had blown them up from all the farts in the room? (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure two explosions in this film would have been way over budget. (laughs) Yeah, no, that, and that tracksuit that he was wearing too was weird. It was like thin. This weird Michael Jackson thing. Yeah, yeah, it was so strange. And I mean, this is sweating his dick off because aren't those the kind of tracksuits that you wear when you're trying to drop weight as a wrestler? Not. (laughs) Matt wrestling. I'm talking about like oiled up Greco Roman wrestling. So, should we get into notes? All right, so this is the notes for Three Spoopy Five Me. Twisted Souls Incorporated Production is apparently the name of the production company that made this. Why is it Twisted Souls Incorporated Productions, though? Did no, this, it was this the co- 80s. There was a lot of cocaine involved, man. Uh, yeah, in incorporated, incorporated. <laughs> so original score here done by John Carpenter's keyboard. They just hit whatever <laughs> preset John Carpenter had set up on his keyboard there and let it play for the movie. You get you see the first effect shot you see is that like crypt thing that like. It's like breathing and it's got the chains over it or whatever, which I guess the effect was supposed to make it look like it was sort of heaving breath, but it just looked like it was made out of felt. Billy, if you're going to come to the creepy woods to eat your pastries, then creepy shit's going to happen, isn't it? Also, don't talk to strangers. Don't talk to strangers. Don't give them lights. What is this man even doing in the woods? Why are these woods so heavily populated by people? And then um, the the background character for uh, from Island of Dr. Moreau. Um, the cat guy or whatever. I don't know what he the was. Were- it's a were cat. Oh, he's a were cat. It's, it's okay. Michael Jackson from the beginning of Thriller. This is Man, true. Every, this movie truly, was fighting. Worse. Go ahead, Scott. Nothing is worse. <laughs> did, you hear, did you hear the sound of that pen angrily hitting the notepad? Oh, no. I, was, I, taught, I just set it down. I didn't, okay. There was no anger. It sounded there. like there was like, God damn it, was what I heard I'm on this side. to read my notes. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing worse than were cats. Like, Werewolves are the best thing, werecats are the worst thing. Yeah, they're really just lame. That's that's such a lame concept, just such a lame everything. Unless they're Peruza Balk, and then I'm kind of into it. What movie are we relating to here? I live Dr. Moreau. She was like a cat. She was in that? Oh, okay, yeah. dude, I haven't seen it. Oh, man. Okay, <laughs> watch that, <laughs> and then watch Lost Souls, because like it really is a great, great double feature. <laughs> Because, like, you watch you watch Island of Dr. Moreau, and you're, like, head in hands, like, what the fuck? Like, it's not as confusing as Spookies. Well, maybe it is. Matt, what do you think? <laughs> um, I mean, at least there's a source material that you can reference with Island of Dr. Monroe, where you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. The, he was turning animals into people. But, like, Spookies, you got nothing. You just gotta, no. you just gotta hope that eventually it makes sense one day. It really <laughs> just, is like watching Troll Two. It, watching Spookies reminded me a whole lot of watching Troll Two because it has that feeling of like the the director did not speak the same language as the actors type level. 
of just confusion, and they're just like, oh, we're just going to do what he tells us, and hopefully this will be over. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've, the only thing I know is that there's a rapist in the basement who loves making chess analogies. That's, that's <laughs> it. That's the only explanation for what's going on here. <laughs> and then, okay, they're in the car, and that guy pulls out a fucking puppet, and I'm like, who invited Jeff Dunham? God damn it. Nobody, <laughs> no, he's just racist. Get him out of here. Nobody, nobody wants Jeff Dunham here, damn it. <laughs> Billy walks into that house and he sees the birthday set up and he's just so happy. He's just, he's just totally okay with them. This is what having incredibly absent parents does to children. Like, they're just so excited for any kind of attention. He sees a creepy birthday party. He's like, whoa, that's so cool. It must be for my birthday. I was like, really, Billy? <laughs> is that what you think? Where do you live? What world do you live in, Billy? Like, he, he, he came from how, he an abusive out home, dude. He just wanted a birthday party. How like how elaborate is that surprise party if he is correct? Like they're like, all right, here's the plan. We're gonna treat our son like shit for ten years, so he runs away, right? <laughs> But in this great this house in the graveyard, because we know he's gonna go to the graveyard, we're gonna have the <laughs> best surprise party ever set up for him, and he'll be like, "Oh my god, I completely forgive you for the last ten years because I I understand that it was just the long play of this." It's a, just a prank, bro. Bro, it's just a prank. <laughs> babe, no, babe. <laughs> like I mean, Billy has suffered. He's either incredibly autistic or has suffered. A, a horrendous break from reality because nothing, <laughs> nothing. Like when he opened that box and there was a severed head in there, I was shocked that he wasn't just like, "Oh, cool, neat, a, a severed head." <laughs> That's real neat. Out. Like, like he was rolling with every other punch that comes at him. Like guys creeping on him in the woods, surprise birthday parties in abandoned houses. Like uh, I forget. Like I don't, I don't. I did. The guy in the basement probably had a name, but I'm just gonna call him the Crypt Keeper. This whole review, because I don't remember when. So the Crypt Keeper at one point goes like, Welcome, fools. And I was like, yes, welcome. Welcome to the Vax <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Still one of the best movies ever. <laughs> yes. Okay, at some point, Billy... Okay, yeah, Billy runs away, right? And then uh, he gets into the woods, and he stops. People are constantly looking directly into camera by the way, in this movie, like, all the time. So he stops right in front of the camera, he looks directly in it, and then he starts doing this, like, crazy Ray Charles impression, where he's just, like, bobbing his head and his eyes aren't looking around, like, he's just, boop, 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 like, oh, and he does that for, like, a full 30 seconds right into camera. Um, and then the cat, the werecat, is just, like, creeping up behind him, and they go on this little chase, and, I don't know, they're playing a game of freeze tag or some shit. I have no idea. But uh, it gets – Billy falls into that shallow grave. He hasn't been hit or, or really hurt. He got some, like, scratches on his face. But then he just lies there, like, uh, uh, in the shallow grave. I'm like, Billy, buddy, have you tried, you know, standing up and <laughs> stepping out of that grave? <laughs> Maybe he was walking away from this situation. But, uh, no, he gets a small amount of dirt thrown on him, and that kills him, I guess. There was no yeah. small amount there. That burying scene is at least a minute and a half long. It is, it is, but you can still see the majority of Billy's body <laughs> after it's done. Like, he's, he's really poking out of the dirt. He didn't cover him at all. Um, Here, so this is what I want to know, is that was cut so it looked like the Catman covered him, but if Catman wasn't in the original script, which I don't know if anybody knows, wh who, what character would have covered Billy up, you I'm, know? I would imagine that Billy had nothing to do with the original script because he's in it for so little. He literally is just there to find a severed head and be buried by a werecat. Yeah, and he never interacts with any of the other characters, right? Right, yeah. That was probably all added filler by creepy British investor guy. Yeah, okay. Um, the, this is going to be terrible, but the chick with the really big tits. I don't remember what her name is. I'm sorry, but... She, I don't think that I remember anybody's name from this, so don't feel too bad. At one point, what's his face? Duke. I remember Duke. Like, fucking, fucking Duke. I remember Duke's name. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, Duke <laughs> is like a real dick to her, and they say something like, well, you put up with that shit. And she turns, and she's talking to, like, the couple that's, like, 50 years old. Because the guy that later on in the movie gets in, like, a fist fight with Duke, that guy is, like, 50. I don't know what he's doing here. I thought I thought he was here to, like, chaperone this party or something like that. Like, it's no place being there. But she turns to them, and she goes, Listen, kids, 
I was like, listen, kids, <laughs> that guy is twice your age. <laughs> Duke is like the most inflammatory, like quick to react character I've ever seen. Like he picks up that weird piece to, to the Ouija board. It just goes like, what is that, art or something? Is it worth money? What, what is this? What is this, a fucking door? What's behind this door? What is, is there some fucking art or some shit in there? Maybe, why won't, this, why won't the door open? This doorknob's not working. Is that a chair? That's a chair. I'm going to smash the fucking chair over this door. I'm going to fucking do it. Like, all that happens in, like, two seconds. I'm like, whoa, dude, calm down, man. Where, where did that come from? Your Duke impression is spot fucking on. <laughs> yeah, it is. I live that life. I am Duke. I'm a New Jerseyan. Is that? I know I'm not up with the American stereotypes. Would Duke be New Jersey? Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Matt should know. He lives right next to it. Yeah, I could literally throw a rock from my house and hit New Jersey. Possibly hit Duke. Throw, throw a fucking grenade. <laughs> then he, he finally does get that door open. He jimmies it open. And uh, the dead Tangina prop from Poltergeist 3 falls out. <laughs> 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 no, no, dude, that, that's not the Tangina prop. That's the fucking, the principal who gets pulled through the TV and trick or treat. <laughs> the dead guy's holding a game, like a, some sort of board, and they pull it out, and Duke's like, what do you need, some fucking dice or something? And they do find dice, and they roll it, and Robin Williams comes bursting out of the board. <laughs> what and then they have to fit it. <laughs> uh, Yes. I'm sorry if I jumped on your joke. I just, oh, I love that line. <laughs> no, that, that was my whole <laughs> man this movie is so all over the place i'm like i'm reading my notes and i don't know what they're even pertaining to <laughs> like i have the physical comedy here is amazing so that must have happened right within the like those next couple of minutes oh it's uh it's when the chick gets turned by the board and then they're like yes. fighting her um just pathetic <laughs> fight attempts just awful which is stupid because later on when him and Duke fight, like they're really going all out. They're like throwing each other over tables and fucking like, like suplexing each other and shit. Like that was cool. Who choreographed that? Obviously somebody from WWF, Matt. I'm not from WWF yet. Uh, edit that out. So again, I have another note. I don't know what it means, but somebody else dies by dirt. It says second death by dirt. Oh, the, 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 the dude, uh, Bobby or whatever who – who gets pulled into the grave and then he the gets grave. pulled into the ground and then the gravestone like comes up and then it like etches his name in it and then they're like, Did you see what just happened? We can't go outside. <laughs> That's it. They're not they're not trying to get in here. They're trying to keep us from leaving. Yeah. Like, well, that was a big logic lump jump. And you know what? You know, wait 20 minutes and try and leave again. I don't know why you can't. Or just sacrifice one of the other people that you don't like and then run for it. Yeah, you don't like anybody. You all hate each other. So what do you care? Somebody's girlfriend is yelling at them and he's like, what do you want me to do? I can't do anything. I, I can't even fucking act. What, what do you want? What do you want from me? It's Attack of the Swamp People. Uh, vegetable gremlins coming all up. I thought you might like that, Scott. The rapist in the basement, basement rapist, is... Um, He's at the chessboard, and at this point in the movie, at this point, he goes, now we may begin. I'm like, dude, you already killed three people. This, this began, like, a long time ago. What are you talking about? Now we may begin. I like hat guy. The dude with the hat on, and he's got, that guy, his shirt is a picture of his own face. Did you guys <laughs> notice that? No. no. The dude in, like, the trucker hat, and, the, and he had the mustache, and he was, like, the comedy relief. He kept backing mm. up into people and shit. The, the fucking asshole who had the, um, the, the puppet for some stupid ass reason. I hated the puppet, but I liked everything else that he was doing. That guy, yeah. His shirt is just a picture of his own face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how could you not love this guy? Plus, his name was Adam. So, big fan of that guy. <laughs> and he gets killed by the spider lady. So, totally awesome. He makes some stupid joke where he's like, Let's see what's behind door number one. And then he opens the door, and it actually, the soundtrack makes a game show noise. Like, it, it's like, doodly doodly doodly, like, it makes a game show noise when he does that. I'm like, who, what are you doing with this movie? <laughs> what, what are you trying to do? Are you really questioning the choice of sound effects in a movie that literally has monsters that fart nonstop for three straight minutes? Uh, no, no. I also, guess, I when, guess the that's monsters get, when the monsters get punched, they should fart even more violently. That's uh, that's just logic. I agree. Yeah. Should have gave one a real good hit to the stomach and it should have just been like... <laughs> 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 They're in the basement and Duke just fell down a flight of stairs fucking hard. 
by the way. But apparently that was a joke. He was just pranking her. That was just for fun. Um, and then she's down on the floor and she's like, oh, it feels so good to lie down. And I'm like, I bet it does. You probably have real bad lower back problems carrying those things around all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I don't know. Like the farting muck monsters is so weird. I was like, at this point, I was like, this this would happen if like we wrote this movie. <laughs> if we like got together and we were like, let's just fuck around and be idiots and just wrote this movie. Yeah, I guess uh, all I could that's... think of was like, did Kevin Smith fucking write this shit? Because this is straight out of dogma right now. If this was a comedy horror, that it would be like, oh okay, I get the farting muck monsters. It, it's funny. No, it's some dude that just really likes farts, and he was like, I'm pit- I'm putting the money in this. Put some farts in it, guys. Uh, yeah, we got everything in the kitchen sink in this movie, but. Fart jokes? Any? Anybody? Uh-huh. All right. That'll sell to the American audience because it was a British guy, right? It was like an English guy that that was yeah, the investor. Yeah, some British saying. douche. <sighs> I don't know. He should he should know better. The chick that got turned by the Ouija board, like, I, there's some good makeup effects in this movie, and then there's that there's, woman's makeup yeah. effects. Like yeah. they were really shoddy. Uh, it looked like as the movie, like they put it on at the beginning of the day and then shot all her scenes all consecutively. And by the end of the day, it was starting to really like wear off and, and flake away. I think it's less that it was wearing off and way more that it was um, like she had no facial movement in that prosthetic. Like she was like, rah, 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 rah. you know, she couldn't talk. She could barely move her jaw, much less her face. It's probably very uncomfortable for her. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure that it was. I don't, I don't think that any of the prosthetics that are in this movie were, were probably enjoyable to have on, except for the electrocuting tentacle monster, which looked like it was real easy to wear that one. Well, yeah, that was just a whole. It looked like this weird leech thing too, right? Like yeah, after- its mouth was like. Burr, burr, burr. It, it, it kind of actually reminds me, you know, you know, in Star Wars. There's that the character the first in in A New Hope, I think it's the it's it's a toss up between the character that rats out Han Solo um, when they're getting ready to get into the Millennium Falcon for the first time to the to the stormtroopers and he's like wah, 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 and his 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 <laughs> nose does that same thing uh, or his trunk or in Return of the Jedi when the uh, the blue the blue alien character who's playing the weird piano in Jabba's hut. Yeah, like the elephant looking guy. Yes, it it does the same thing and or maybe it's it, there are so many Star Wars aliens that have these weird noses that do the exact same thing. You're such a nerd. I was going to say I'm like, wow. Scott's usually the coolest one on the podcast, but uh, man, you lost some cool points on that discussion. But I lost yeah. even more because I was like, I'm picking up exactly what you're throwing down. I know exactly what creatures you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't think that uh, I'm sitting here going, thing. I had the toys for both of those. <laughs> Listen, I don't think that you lose coolness points for for discussing Star Wars, which was a formative movie series from our childhood. It's a little different when you're, like, an adult man who's talking about how awesome Harry Potter is. All right? right? All right. That's just yeah. what you said. It's not a, not a... Are we really just at the muck monster note? Because we still have, like, 45 minutes of that of this movie left to discuss then. Yeah, no, I, there's not that many notes. Don't worry, Salacious B. Crumb. We're, we're getting... <laughs> <laughs> if I could do the laugh like Salacious, like, ah! <laughs> That was pretty close. That, that was, was pretty, pretty good. damn good. I have never, that was my first try. Give me a month of practicing that all day, every day on my commute to and from work. <laughs> Ask me again. What happened? We'll just have what? you doing that and me doing Blonde Kid from Hocus Pocus yes. after every one of Adam's Dude. notes. <laughs> Dude, I told you already. My name's Ice. <laughs> 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 Jeez. I realized Hocus Pocus with Megan on Halloween, and it is so dead on perfect. Fucking <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob, the high school years in that goddamn movie. All right, so yeah, we get to that that weird ghoulies slash gremlins gremlin slash snake monster puppet thing, which is a weird weird scene. Very lazily fighting them off. It's like on her back just kind of sort of touching her and then she stabs it in what i guess is its shoulder 
If you can call that a shoulder, I don't know. Yeah, that whole scene was... Why would they kill her? Kill it though? It'd just be like, ah, and like bite her some more. It's a demon monster. Come on. And uh, where where cats outside the window jacking it the whole time, <laughs> watching that all go down. He's the rapist in the basement. Is this is where he gets his namesake because he's like, oh. Uh, you thought you only had one son? Well, would you like to meet your other son? Uh? And I'm like, hasn't she been asleep for like 20 years? And this kid's like eight years old. Yeah, Wait, he, that... he got tired of waiting. Yeah, I'm like, is that what the implication is? That's, that that's, that's, just... that's not implication. That is the exact reason why there's a kid and why she freaks out. Yeah, that was unsettling. That made me feel kind of gross. Okay, so fucking face melt out of nowhere... Love that it. was that was like a, such a good effect, and I rerouted it and watched it twice because I was like, "Yep, yeah, that's a high point. They're not gonna get any better than that." In this <laughs> oh, and then um, the I don't know Sleeping Beauty, whatever her name is. We're gonna yeah, Sleeping Beauty. She's running through uh, the crypts in the basement or whatever, and one of the we were talking about Troll Two earlier. One of the fucking nil bogs from Troll Two <laughs> is what is chasing her around in the basement. Like it looks exactly like those those uh, puppet, you know, little people actors. Also, Scott Troll Two, little people actors, huh? huh? <laughs> Not bad. That is uh, that is running around in Troll Two. It looks just like it. So uh, Adam, that's the other guy. That's uh, <laughs> guy with the own Mr. Adam. He gets attacked by the the spider lady, but he also gets. Uh, like a discount dollar store face hugger on his face for a little bit there. <laughs> Direct rip off of Alien. I don't think that you need to be upset about this movie ripping off every movie because it really does. Well, it's so influential for, uh, you know, Joe Dante and Kevin Smith. And it really, it passed it, passed it forward. It paid it forward <laughs> starring, you know, Haley Joel Osment. Uh, I really like the snake lady effect or the spider lady effect. That was really cool. And then it really sealed the deal when it pulled a life force and it sucked all the juice out of that guy and he was all like, looked all like gaunt and like emptied out, hollowed out. I was like, that was fucking cool. I like that. <laughs> Didn't life force come out same year, 1986? Oh my God. Uh, man, they really love splitting people's heads open in this movie. Everybody's heads are splitting down the middle. Strange. Then we get to the end of the movie and I just have what the fuck is happening i said that so many times throughout this movie that it lost all meaning i don't <laughs> it doesn't matter okay does this scene where she runs from the zombies and they like really intensely grope her does it have to go on for 15 minutes i mean it really didn't need to be if, if like, you're the if you're the british financier of this movie yes it does <laughs> yeah i guess so yeah Ugh, gross um, and then the ending is fucking shit. The ending's terrible. I didn't like it. Um, like I've been, it, it harkened back to that crypt thing, right? And I was like, oh, cool. Like I had completely forgotten about that. We're going to see what's in it. It's just the basement rapist. That was all that was in there. So that was kind of lame. I was hoping for at least like one more good special effect. Uh, another like really awesome creature design or something. But Well, no, it couldn't, it couldn't have been anything... From the original, um, from the original story of this film, because they screwed the whole, like the whole story so bad that they had to add something new at the end. That was pretty garbage. And I guess Werecat guy can disguise his Werecatness. He's magic too. It was, it was all right. <laughs> it was okay. As much as I'm ripping into it, though, I like I would suggest that you get a group of friends, you get kind of drunk, uh, and you you watch this movie and don't. Don't do what I did. Don't sit and wait for it to make sense because that train is never going to come. Um, you're going to be waiting for a while. <laughs> just just rip into it right from the get-go. Everybody's garbage. They're all going to die. Nothing matters. You don't. You, nobody belongs anywhere. <laughs> the universe is huge and your, your importance in it is zero. Just everybody's going to, you know, nihilism. That's what I take away from this movie. I'm Adam, so how's now. that different from any day for you? <laughs> it's not. You know what? I'm probably going to die tonight, so I might as well just get drunk. Um, that's 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 the motto I took away from this movie. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, and that's that's too spoopy for me. So let's talk about what we watched this week. I'll, I'll start off because I don't have anything too great. Weird ass movie night. We watched Toxic Avenger Part Two. It's still terrible. Um, cannot wait. Is that the one where he he has to fight everybody in front of the house at the beginning, and yes. he squeezes the guy in the wheelchair, and his guts come out? Yep. Ugh, I love that scene. I love it, but I hate it. 
Yeah, that, but it, all in all, not a very good movie. Uh, and the reason that uh, we're recording this a little bit later on a Sunday than we usually prefer to is because I uh, went and saw the Peanuts movie for my niece's third birthday or er, fifth birthday, and uh, oh. it's pretty good. Uh, it's it's not like laugh out loud funny, but it's you know I mean cute by kids standards. But it's uh the animation style is really really kind of cool. Like I was really drawn into it because it's a weird combination of like claymation, paper cutouts, and computer animation all kind of blend it together. And uh, it just it's probably the most unique looking animated film I've seen in a really really long time. So that alone is worth watching it for because you're just as an adult you're just going to be like, how did they do this? Like it just looks so completely different than everything else that's been out there. But that's all I got. Okay, um, I watched... Well, I, I, I got caught up on um, Season 3 of, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That might be the best, most nuanced of the superhero shows. Um, I love it. I had forgotten how much I love it. Everything about that TV show is just the shit. So good. I am trying to catch up on Arrow, but it's going to take a while because I'm a season and a half behind. I don't love Arrow that much. It's kind of stupid. And women don't run around in skimpy dresses and high heels every fucking day. Jesus Christ. It's really annoying. But um, I, I watched... Did I, I tell Con- you guys... I heard Constantine makes a cameo in uh, one of the new episodes of Arrow. I'm not sure of if that's Arrow? true or not. Uh, okay. It sounds good for me. I'll, I'll definitely be happy with that. See, I didn't watch that show yet either. Um... I had low expectations, but I have high expectations that a Justice League Dark movie will get made and we finally get to see a good Swamp Thing, not the uh, 1980 Swamp Thing, which is, has nothing to do with the good take on the character. But we agree, Return of the Swamp Thing is a fun movie. Uh, I feel like that could be a wild card for Horror Movie Night because it <laughs> is almost horror and there's just so much to talk about. Um <laughs> Hey, I watched uh, I watched four episodes of Constantine, um, and this was right after I had just finished reading like two hundred issues of Hellblazer, and, <laughs> and it didn't hold up, did it? <laughs> it ju- I just actually heard somebody describe it the other day as as like it's a really shit adaptation of Hellblazer, but it's a really awesome like dark noir, uh, you know, kind of crime show. So uh, just go in with that expectation. Don't so don't it's grip the TV yeah, show yeah, grip. Uh, kind of, yeah, yeah, similar too. Ah, all right. Well, I, I can't remember what else I watched. I'm sure I'll remember eventually, probably down the line, and we can talk about the horrible decisions I make. Oh, oh, I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished it yet, but I just have to mention the first two minutes of 1987 Stage Fright is intense. Yeah, no, it's a great little slasher film. But the the dancing, because I'm like, oh, okay, they're, they're, when it turns out that they're like practicing for this play, and then the Birdman comes out and he's like, Brr! and he's doing pirouettes and shit. Wow, I was not prepared. All right, Adam, what did you watch this week? This week I watched, uh, I'm, I'm all caught up on Ash versus Evil Dead. Okay, I'm not, so. Uh, it's It's been awesome. Uh, okay. The third episode takes it somewhere that the like you really aren't expecting it to go, but I like the direction that they move in. It was really, it was good. It was very interesting. Uh, I bet that's going to be a bit of a derisive, ep- like a decisive episode for people. It's probably going to split people right down the middle. But I like what they did with it, and that show's just so much fucking fun. I mean, it, I, Bruce Campbell actually did like an AMA on Reddit the other day, and he's such an asshole to everybody in that thread, and I loved every second of it. Yeah, someone like, told me to read it because they're like the answer. The questions are the shittiest questions in the world, but the answers make it well worth it. <laughs> Well, he openly is like, he, uh, there's a couple times where he's like, that was dumb. What the fuck are you asking me that shit for? <laughs> like, he just does stuff like that. He's like, uh, oh, he just, I love him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, what did I watch the other day? Oh, oh, I watched um, With Bob and David, which is the reincarnation of Mr. Show that is on uh, Netflix currently. And they do something uh, very very similar to that at the end of one of their shows. Um, they get jihaded or whatever, and they die, and they have to get 72 virgins. But it's 72 male virgins, and they're just like, okay, we're going to do a question and answer period. And they're all like, uh, tell me about the Arrested Development movie. Uh, what's going to happen in Better Call Saul? Like, they just do that. And it's just like <laughs> such a slap in the face to all these people that are always asking them that dumb shit. <laughs> that was pretty good. And then... Um, I, I'll save the other ones for, for next week, but I watched, or I've been listening to uh, the Front Bottoms new album, Back on Top, which um, 
when you first, I hated it. I hated it so bad when I first heard it. And now it's really grown on me and I can't stop listening to it. And it's, uh, it's, it's like nicely innocent and, and simple. You, if you didn't think that they could simplify their lyrics even more than they already are, well, get ready, because they have lyrics like, uh, you're going to take me higher and higher like a ladder going up and up, <laughs> like like shit like that. And you, you see that on paper, and you're like, that's the dumbest shit ever. And then I'm in the car like, higher and higher <laughs> like a ladder. Just... I love. I, it's such a fun. <laughs> Listen, you were you were wasting your life listening to fucking Best Coast before we started recording. I'm not <laughs> yeah, it was. For, for anything ever again. And you picked uh, Spookies. Like you are batting a thousand today, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm hitting it out of the fucking park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, that's that's me for the week. I, I'm. Uh, I don't know. If you liked Front Bottoms and you heard that album and you thought it sucked, give it a little bit. It'll grow on you. It grew on me. Well, that was Spookies, uh, as picked by Adam. Uh, great, great choice, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> buddy. Um, <laughs> This is uh this is the first episode we've actually recorded since our first mailbag episode, which I th- I think went okay. It wasn't it wasn't the worst mailbag episode I've ever heard of a podcast. <laughs> it was the first one I've ever heard or been a part of. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so feel free to send us some mail at hmnpodcast at gmail dot com. We'll always find some good letters to read in future mailbag episodes. And also, it's your emails that let us know what movies to subject Adam to. Uh, you know, so so we can unless make... he decides to subject us to things like spookies. Spookies. <laughs> oh, what? Are we putting this on the same level as Space Invaders here? I mean, we know who the no, real bad but we guy can put is. It on the same level as fucking oh. taxidermia. If you yes. call this, this is so much better than taxidermia. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> You're uh, right. So, right. Nobody gets eaten by cats in this movie. <laughs> and there's no flaming penises. <laughs> oh, oh, you're right. Taxidermy is a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you forgot about that, didn't you? Yep. All right. So, oh, uh, yeah. so next week's movie uh, for the hint, I, I want to say podcast. Podcast is the hint for next week's movie, and also just you know a quick little uh, I hate you canon is I'm going to throw in there as well. <laughs> but uh, podcast is the is the hint for next week's movie. Uh, so, you know, feel free to comment on this episode on our Facebook page with what you think we're going to watch. But uh, you can you can probably figure it out. You're, I trust that you guys are smart. Uh, so that's Thank it. Much, eh, make sure to send us your movie suggestions at HMNpodcast.com. Beyond, yeah, it's a fucking ridiculously bad movie, but I think that it's... I'm so disappointed with your response to it because well, you were the connoisseur of shitty things. Yeah, you know what it was though. It it wasn't even that I I didn't hate this movie. Like, trust me, I'm 100 percent with Adam. If this gets a DVD or a Blu-ray release, not only will I own it, but I will subject people to it. I think that this is probably a movie it's that no is serial and claim in serial insane clown killer. Uh, kill, yeah. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 